Hey, how's it going? In a recent tutorial, we went into excruciating detail talking about time signature mapping. And today we're gonna talk about tempo. We've already covered a very specific application of tempo mapping to put to grid a song that was recorded without a click. So the link to that is up there if you wanna check it out. Today, as per usual, we're starting by focusing on some mouse modifiers and hotkeys that you may find useful, and then we'll implement them in a real life example. Finding the tempo of a track that has been recorded to a click, but we don't know what that tempo is. I will do a second part to this, because goddamn, there is so much to cover. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so here's a blank project. And as you can see, we don't have any tempo markers here, but the project still has a tempo and time signature. You can change this in your project settings from the main tab, or you can just go to your transport bar and you have your tempo right here. You can type in here to change the tempo, or you can also tap the tempo. So if I hover my mouse over here where it says BPM, it'll change into tap. And now I can click to tap the tempo of the project. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Four. And now our tempo is 105. Now I find using a mouse for tapping not responsive enough. I personally prefer to use a key. So go to your action list and look for tap tempo. And I have this set to my numpad minus. Even better, you can set this to your electronic drum set or a pad on your controller or whatever, if that makes it easier. So up to this point, we only have one tempo for the whole project. Now tempo information Reaper is written onto the tempo envelope on your master track. So I can go to view and select master track up here, or I can press command option and M to show our master track in our arrange view. And I can click on this box here and look for the tempo envelope and toggle it visible. And now we see our tempo map in 2D. And this works like any other envelope lane. So I can drag on this lane to change it, or I can command and double click any envelope point to type in its value manually. So let's do 110. I can also shift click to insert a new point here, change its value. And I can even draw a tempo map by command and left dragging on the lane. <laughs> now this is obviously really quick, but not too, too precise. So if you double click any tempo marker, you will see this window right here and some of its features we've covered in the time signature video. Videos, but here you can find this box called gradually transition tempo to next marker. And if I hit that, instead of the tempo moving in stepwise increments, it'll be a linear ramp up or down to the next tempo marker. This obviously works in both directions, as you can see right here. So I don't use the tempo envelope for mapping a whole lot, but one useful thing you can do is to change multiple markers together with this envelope. So I can right drag to select multiple tempo markers and I can move them all together, left or right or up and down to make this faster and slower while preserving the measure count and proportion of this entire map. So if you want to be a bit more precise with your bulk editing, you can also open the action list and run these actions to increase or decrease the whole thing in specific amounts, like one BPM or even 1%. Now let's go over some mouse modifiers. If I hover my mouse over any of these tempo markers, they turn red. I can left drag to move the marker. So if I don't have stuff on my project that will get messed up, I can quickly adjust the overall mapping like this. Let's look at the rest of the mouse modifiers under tempo slash time signature markers. We just saw the default. Add shift to that to ignore snap and we'll see when this is useful in a second. The next one is command. And this one moves the tempo marker adjusting previous markers tempo. So to demonstrate that if I move this tempo marker, you can see that all later tempo markers move together with it. And the only value changing is the previous marker. So only one project marker to the left of our marker is changing tempo and everything else remains the same. Then command and option will move tempo marker adjusting previous and current tempo. So basically all but two markers are preserved. So to quickly recap, I can just left drag a marker to just move that one. With command, I will move that one and all later markers which only affects the previous marker, or with command and option together, we will also preserve the position of all future markers and previous markers. But yeah, that's all the basics. And the tempo envelope is not very useful if you need to be super precise, but it is useful when batch moving and editing markers, and it also shows you a visual contour of your project tempo. So let's get to a real life example. I'm gonna delete all tempo markers using Xtreme delete all tempo markers. So I have this song right here, and let's say I need to find its tempo, and this song does actually have tempo changes on it. So this would be a relatively tough example so hopefully by tempo mapping this, we will cover a lot of ground. Otherwise, comment below if you had any questions that were unanswered. So the easiest way to do that, in my opinion, is just to use tap tempo. So first thing I'm going to do is go to the beginning of the project and I can delete this first tempo marker by option clicking. Just make sure you don't have any tempo markers. So when we tap tempo, we are setting the project tempo. Now you can leave the metronome on for this part, but I personally find that it throws me off. So I'm going to tap it with the metronome off. And once I think I'm in the right ballpark, I'll toggle the metronome on and I'll check. So let's hit it. I'm going to tap the tempo as I listen. I landed on 85 and now I'm going to check. We'll just make sure the first downbeat is on the top of a measure. So let's really zoom in here and set that here on measure one. Toggle the metronome on and now let's play it.
Uh, all right, that sounds about right. I'm also gonna check a bit further into the song to make sure it doesn't fall off later on. So cool, sounds on grid, so our tempo is 85. However, this song also has a free tempo bridge and then the tempo will also change in the B section. So as you can see, there's very little info in the song for us to get a tempo map going on the bridge, but right after we clearly are in a new tempo. So I'm just gonna skip the bridge for now, but let's first hit shift C and insert a new tempo marker at the beginning of the bridge. This marker will serve as kind of like an anchor for us. The tempo before this point will not change as we fiddle with this part. And really we don't care too much for what the tempo for this bit is just yet. What's important is the B section. So let's find the downbeat again. So this beat right here is the beginning of our B section. And I don't know the tempo, but I do want this to be the beginning of a new measure, obviously. So I'll go to the next measure and I'll hit shift and C and hit enter. We don't know the tempo yet, but now that we have this, I can use my command mouse modifier and just drag this to the beginning of that downbeat. And as you can see, our previous tempo marker is now changing value. So I'll place it on the downbeat. And now we can see that the value of our project marker is 98.8 plus change. So what I wanna do now is to tap this next part. Now, normally if you have no tempo markers on the project, tap tempo will set the project tempo. But once you have at least one tempo marker in your project, the tap tempo will set the tempo for the marker under the edit cursor. Or if there isn't one already, tap tempo will create a new one. So for example, if I start at a random place like right here and play it and start tapping, as you can see, this just created a new marker where my edit cursor was. So once you have some markers, just make sure your edit cursor is right on the tempo marker you are tapping the value for. So I'll put that here and I'll tap it. And then this part goes like the last part. Disable metronome, tap it, re-enable metronome and check it. And if it passes the first check, check a later point in the project and Bob's your uncle. So now that leaves us with this a tempo bridge section. Now we can leave this as is, but if you're nitpicky, you can double click on it and set it once again to 85. And this time I will also take this box to gradually transition tempo to our next marker because this is very likely to be a linear tempo change, right? I'll hit enter and this change will move our next marker, but the tempo is still 105. So now I'll just use the shift mouse modifier to once again move this back to the downbeat. And this will set the angle of the ramp for us. So now it's a linear linear ramp from 85 to 105 and the downbeat is aligned. So this is exactly how the song was written and I actually wrote this song long ago in Logic and when I imported it into my project, I still had to do this part manually. That's because linear tempo ramps are recorded as incremental changes in your MIDI files. So it's up to your source and destination DOS to interpret them. And in my experience, they never do that correctly. So you have to be really careful when it comes to linear ramps. If you're collaborating with someone else, for example, they won't exactly get the same map, but they will just see a few incremental changes maybe every quarter note. So we might as well refrain from using linear ramps ourselves so we can get full control of what the destination DAW sees. But even beyond that, if you're not collaborating with any other DAW users, non-linear incremental ramps are just way more natural. This is how musicians actually interpret an accelerando or a retardando section. It's hard for a human to ramp linearly making every quarter note faster than the last one. What we usually do is we say, okay, we got four measures to get from 85 to 105. So let's just change the tempo at the top of every measure until we get to 105. So now that I know all this, I tend to favor stepwise changes. So once again, I'll double click this tempo marker and untick this box. And then I can just shift click on this envelope, move it up a bit, bless you baby. Go to the next measure, rinse and repeat. And now I can right drag to grab all these points together, go to a point and drag it up until the downbeat falls in place again. So yeah, to me, this is more natural and translates better to another DAW or when using external synths. So let's stop right here. There will be a part two and once that's out, I'll put the link up here. If you like these videos that I do, you can support the channel by becoming a member. And to find out more, watch this video above. Thanks to our first three members, Boo, Will, P, and Mastering in the Box. Also, as always, you can donate to me through buymeacoffee.com. The link to that will be in the description. And a huge thanks to Troy for being our most recent donor. Otherwise, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.